this is the iPhone 15's bigger brother, the iPhone 15 Plus. Go big or go home, right? But size isn't everything. What's new here compared to last year's model? I'm Will for GSM Arena and let's find out in our iPhone 15 Plus review. First off, we've done things a bit differently for this video. All of the shots you see of the phone were taken with an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let us know what you think about that down in the comments below. The iPhone 15 Plus's claim to fame is the size. It's much larger than the vanilla iPhone 15 and has the same size screen and battery capacity as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Of course, the 15 Plus is cheaper than the Pro Max and misses several features that you'd get with the premium model, but still it brings plenty of upgrades compared to last year. These include a brighter display, a new 48 megapixel main camera, and a chipset upgrade. And on the front, you get a pill-shaped cutout and dynamic island, just like the rest of the new iPhones. But maybe the biggest game changer is that Apple has switched from a lightning port to USB-C, the standard used in the rest of the smartphone world. However, the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus get USB 2.0 instead of the speedier USB 3 on the Pro models. When it comes to design, it's all pretty familiar. It's an iPhone after all. The flat glass is etched to provide a matte feel. And this time, the edge where the aluminum frame meets the glass isn't as sharp, it's more rounded. The iPhone 15 Plus has IP68 rated ingress protection against dust and water submersion, just like the rest of the iPhone bunch. And you'll still find an alert slider on the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. On the Pro models, that's been replaced with an action key. Like I mentioned, the display of the iPhone 15 Plus is similar to the Pro Max's, a 6.7 inch OLED with a pixel density of 460 ppi. However, you only have a 60 hz refresh rate here, which means that swiping and scrolling appear less smooth than on the Pro Max or other phones with a high refresh rate. 60 hz just feels outdated at this point. Maybe Apple was holding that back to spice up the next generation with. Let's talk about the improvement in brightness though. When maxing out the manual slider, we achieved over 800 nits, about the same as on the iPhone 14 Plus. But this year's model is able to boost that brightness in auto mode in bright conditions like direct sunlight. With this boost kicking in, we measured nearly 1650 nits maximum. The display has support for HDR10 and Dolby Vision, as well as True Tone, which keeps whites looking consistent in different lighting conditions. The colors are generally very accurate too. The pill-shaped cutout rather than a notch is probably the most apparent change compared to last year. This cutout houses the selfie cam and the 3D TOF camera, which is used for Apple's Face ID. You also get the dynamic island functionality. The UI uses the black bar of the pill to show relevant info, as well as shortcuts you can use to call up certain apps from the background. For audio, the iPhone 15 Plus has stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support. The speakers are a bit quieter than last year's, but the loudness is still good. And the sound quality is excellent with punchy highs, clear vocals, and pronounced bass. I'll drop a link so you can check it out for yourself. You can get the iPhone 15 Plus with 128, 256, or 512 gigs of storage, and you can expand it beyond that if you attach USB storage. The interface of the iPhone 15 Plus is Apple's latest iOS 17. It's pretty much the same experience as the previous OS version with a few new features sprinkled in. While you don't get a typical always-on display here, there is a new standby mode, which is a landscape always-on display which only turns on while the phone is charging. Interactive widgets are another new feature. You can manipulate them on the home screen itself, without having an app pop-up. Contact posters is a feature which lets you further customize the look of your contacts, using photos, memojis, and text. And some other new features in iOS 17 include voice isolation during calls, live voicemail, offline maps, and sharing passwords with friends. And like the other new iPhones, there's support for video output via Type-C Alt Mode. It's basically display mirroring, with letterboxing on a standard 16x9 external display, except with certain apps such as Netflix, which support full screen output. The iPhone 15 Plus also supports USB host mode, through which you can connect things like a mouse or keyboard or an external hard drive. The iPhone 15 Plus brings an upgraded chipset, but it isn't the newest Apple chip you'd find in the new Pro models. Instead, you get the Apple A16 Bionic chipset, which debuted with last year's Pro model. Compared to the A15 Bionic in the iPhone 14 Plus, the A16 brings both more raw power and power efficiency. In CPU benchmarks, the iPhone 15 Plus comes in near the top of the charts. 
In graphics tests, it also does a good job, although the Android flagships with their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 give it a run for its money. When it comes to thermal management, the 15 Plus does a great job. It maintained better performance than the smaller iPhone 15 during our prolonged stress test, especially when it comes to the GPU. The iPhone 15 Plus's battery has a capacity of nearly 4400 milliamp hours, and the battery life is great here, with an endurance rating of 111 hours in our proprietary tests. That's better than last year's iPhone 14 Plus, but it still falls a bit short of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which scored 121 hours. As ever, there's no charger included in the box, but with a proper adapter, we were able to charge the 15 Plus from 0 to 53% in 30 minutes. Nothing exciting. But surprisingly, the phone was able to charge to full much faster than the 15 Pro Max. There's also support for wireless charging. Now we've made it to the cameras. Just like the iPhone 15, there's a new 48 megapixel main cam and a 12 megapixel ultra wide cam. This main cam isn't the same as the 48 megapixel cam on the Pro models, but in a similar fashion, it produces 24 megapixel photos by default. As you'd expect, the main cam performs very well during the day. Its 24 megapixel photos are a step up from the last generation, in particular when it comes to detail. The sharpness is also excellent, there's good contrast, and the dynamic range is wide. The quality is quite consistent from shot to shot. Our biggest gripe was with Apple's color science. The colors are true to life, but much less saturated than what you get from other manufacturers, and the result feels rather muted. You can also shoot photos in 12 megapixels, and the overall quality is the same, except you get a lower level of detail. It's noticeable in stationary objects and foliage. Portraits taken in the default one times mode are excellent. The subject is sharp and well exposed, and the separation does a great job, even without a 3D TOF sensor to help out. The main cam can provide a 2 times zoom and is quite good. These come out in 12 megapixels, and the rendition is again the same. You only miss out on a bit of fine detail. When shooting at night, the iPhone 15 Plus's performance is again quite consistent. Sharpness, detail, and dynamic range are excellent. The look is overall natural looking, with darker shadows. There is an automatic night mode that can trigger if the phone decides that it's needed. We didn't see this happen too often. But when it does, the photos come out in 12 megapixel resolution and they are a bit brighter, especially in the shadows. There's a touch of sharpness added too. The iPhone 15 Plus can capture video in up to 4K resolution on all of its cameras. 4K footage from the main camera is sharp and detailed, with accurate color reproduction and wide dynamic range. The main cam has sensor shift OIS, but electronic stabilization is also available across all cameras. It works great to smooth out bumps and shakes. The main cam also does a great job in recording 4K videos in low light. There's little to no noise, detail is good, and sharpness is impressive. Dynamic range could be slightly better, as some light sources are clipped. The ultra-wide camera's performance is disappointing for this class of phone. The photos are soft and lacking in fine detail, with some visible noise. At least the colors, contrast, and dynamic range match the main cam. At night, the ultra-wide camera's performance isn't very good if the auto night mode doesn't kick in. It's borderline unusable. If you do happen to get the night mode to fire, you'll get a bunch of sharpening added and the noise is cleaned up. But the dynamic range is still limited and the detail is lacking. The colors also come out warmer. 4K videos from the ultra-wide are quite decent for this sort of camera. The rendition is identical to the main camera, but noticeably softer, especially in the corners. Selfies come from the 12 megapixel front-facing cam, which has autofocus. They're good, very sharp and detailed, with natural colors and wide dynamic range. But skin and facial features come out a bit too contrasty, which may not be to everyone's taste. One final feature I'll talk about is automatic portraits. When a camera detects a suitable scene, a toggle will pop up and you can switch to portrait on the fly. And even if you don't use the toggle, you can go back and turn that picture into a portrait later. So that's the iPhone 15 Plus. You get quite a few changes here compared to last year's model, including the brighter display, new chipset, and nicer main camera. If you like the new pill cutout instead of a notch, well, there you go. And one fundamental change is the switch from Lightning to USB Type-C. You'd find all of the same features in the cheaper, vanilla iPhone 15. You just get a smaller screen, less battery life, and a full charge there takes even longer. If you want the benefits of the larger size without having to spend a lot of extra cash for the Pro Max, then the iPhone 15 Plus fits that niche and is worth recommending. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking for alternatives to the iPhone 15 Plus, you can check out our reviews of the iPhone 14 Plus and the vanilla iPhone 15. See you next time.